Greetings everyone and welcome to Las Vegas. You've tuned into Ironworker Impact TV, your in-room channel that will be the place to be for anything and everything that has to do with the 2012 North American Ironworkers Impact Labor Management Conference. I'm Dominic Geritano and this year, as has been the case every year of this annual meeting, I'm delighted to be your host. And I begin with good news. This year's meeting with the theme, The Sky is the Limit, will break a record for the number of our contractors and customers in attendance. This meeting just keeps getting bigger and better. On behalf of co-chairs Walt Wise and Bill Brown and Impact's Eric Waterman, I want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to join us here at the Paris Hotel. After a few brutal years in our industry, we're starting to see some glimmers of hope as we look to the future. And with events like this, we truly believe the sky is the limit if we have a working relationship and the tools in place to take advantage of opportunities as they happen. We've all been down together, so let's work hard to get our ducks in a row so that we can all rise together and increase our market share in the months and years to come. As you probably know, President Wise has gone on record with the goal of doubling our market share within the next 10 years. And over the next few days, you'll see evidence of just how serious he really is. In fact, at the recently concluded Ironworkers Convention in Chicago, Impact was formally incorporated into the Constitution. That means any new collective bargaining agreement will contain Impact funding language. We're serious about having the budget it takes to implement the kind of programs and promotions we need to move our industry forward. If you're a veteran of this meeting, maybe the first thing you'll notice is a change in the way we're getting the agenda to you. In an effort to cut down on cost and be more efficient, we've replaced our traditional spiral-bound agenda books with an online version. You can now access all the information you'll ever need at bit.ly backslash meeting 2012. But if you ever need a quick reminder of the day's events, you can find it right here in your name tag badge. A thumbnail version of the agenda will be right at your fingertips, right inside the badge. Joining me in our coverage of the event again this year will be Bob Miskey and Kevin Villegas. Thanks, Tom. I'm here with General President Walter Weiss. Walt, when does work begin on a big event like this? Well, you can see all the activity behind us, but actually we start planning immediately after the last year. And you can see what a great job we've done trying to improve it every year because you look at the attendance, which is markedly up this season, over 200 more participants, and that's just a, a symbolic of what we can do and what we do in the planning stages of trying to get this uh, event together. I notice there's a little bit of a mobilization from Washington, all sorts of people uh, running around doing all sorts of last minute stuff. Well, this is one of our premier events that we have where we bring in owners, we bring in our signatory contractors, we bring in our local unions. So this is a major event for us and we want to make sure everything runs as it's supposed to and that has value for all the participants. As everybody knows, you've gone on record as wanting to increase market share, even uh, doubling it in the next 10 years. How important are meetings like this to reach that goal? Oh, this is, this is very important because when you see that the different players, the different stakeholders in the industry that are here, the owners, they're the ones going to decide to build, they're the ones going to decide to use the iron workers, our signatory contractors. Everybody has to work together to increase market share and that's what we're doing. Are you looking forward to the next couple days? Without a doubt. Always good to be around iron workers. Okay, great. Let's throw it over to Kevin Villegas. Kevin? Thanks, Bob. Uh, we're here with Eric Waterman and Kevin Hilton. How you guys doing? Good. How are you, Kevin? Great. Good. First question here is for Eric. Uh, you know, when Impact formed nine years ago, kind of just out of the blue, kind of tell me how far it's come now it's written into the Constitution. How do you feel about that? Wow. Uh, you know, we started way behind some of the other trades who already had Labor Management Trust. And uh, the trustees laid out a vision, though, and we had a game plan. We put a staff together, and uh, we have outpaced everybody and but ne never in my wildest dreams would I would I have thought that uh, it would then be in the ironworker constitution uh, and so we are part of the ironworkers yeah, definitely doing things right and this one's for you Kevin uh, you know a couple new things this year maybe just pick some of your favorites kind of highlights uh, what are you looking forward to well one of the challenges of this conference is keeping it fresh so this year we're offering continuing education credits we're going into building information modeling in a breakout. We're going to we're going to delve into construction apps. 
uh, we're, we're, it's, it's just a fresh conference. It gets fresher every year. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons our attendance continues to climb. Anything to add to that, Eric? No, uh, it does climb. Uh, this is the fifth annual conference. It gets bigger every year despite the economy. And as Kevin said, we've got uh, some special new breakout sessions, great speakers, great turnout. We're looking forward to it. All right, I'm joined now by Bill Brown, the president of Ben-Hur Construction in St. Louis and also the management co-chair of Impact. Bill, what do you hear in the contractor community about this meeting? How, how does this annual meeting uh, play among your peer group? Well, I think that this year, especially with all that's going on, it's an election year. People worried about or wondering what might happen there. We have several pretty important issues. We have uh, the workload, which is way down, and things that we can do about that. We're going to have some uh, pretty heads-on conversation. We're going to have our contractors panel, uh, our uh, contractors panel, owners panel, and then, of course tomorrow afternoon we'll have our contractors only visit with the general officers. Which, under the given climate, climate, I, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, pretty face-to-face, -face, uh, pensive uh, conversation. Well, are you hopeful that when you get all the people under the same tent that, you know, some good can come out of it? Oh, sure, and it always does, and it has every year, and I think that's why our attendance gets better and better, and people talk about it. The RABs are meeting a lot more frequently with larger attendance, and people know what's going on here. And a lot of what you're going to see here at this total gathering for the next several days is a result of what the RABs have been discussing, what they want to brought out, and what they want us to try to deal with as a group. Uh, Bill, at the last uh, Iron Worker Convention, uh, impact language was now uh, uh, inserted into the uh, Iron Worker uh, Constitution. Your your thoughts about uh, about having impact in uh, all the forthcoming CBAs? Well, without sounding too funny, I guess I'd say it's about time. Uh, I'm glad that, that we're there now. It takes a whole lot of the science and wonder out of the thing. We have some uh, RABs and some local unions that are doing their part. And with their contractor groups, there are others that are lagging a bit behind. This levels everything out. This gets everybody on board, and I think it, it gets everything. So we do, we don't have to worry about that piece of it anymore. And we'll have the uh, resources and the wherewithal to do the things that Impact was set up to do going forward. Great, thanks for your time, Bill. Thank you. Okay, let's throw it back to Dom now for the agenda. Registration Sunday runs from 10 in the morning to 6:30 in the evening in the Concord foyer. After you register, make sure you swing by the exhibit hall in Concord A to pay a visit to those who support us and the union ironworking industry. And while you're there, be sure to snag your free drink ticket. Sunday evening from 6 to 8 is the welcome reception in the Champagne Rooms 2 and 3. Make sure you're there to renew some old friendships as well as make some new ones. We'll also have some special surprise musical entertainment you won't want to miss. The conference officially kicks off with our Monday morning general session. 7.30 is the time. Concord B and C is the place. Opening the proceedings will be the singing of the United States and Canadian National Anthems by our special guest, Gary Russo, the singing iron worker. As is custom, the conference will begin with some opening remarks from President Wise, Bill Brown, and Eric Waterman, followed by a visit from the former number one Marine, James Conway, 34th Commandant, of the United States Marine Corps. Next up will be a rising from the ashes success story from Local 6 in Buffalo, New York. You'll hear about a group that bit the bullet where their pension was concerned. And after some dark days, are now seeing contractors back in town bidding work. In the middle of the morning session, we'll hear from Anibon Basu, CEO of Sage Policy Group and his thoughts about the recovery. It's slow, but it's coming. Following that, another impact first. We'll get a report from the historic inaugural meeting of RAB 11 in Vancouver. It's the first of what soon will be three new regional advisory boards in Canada. Lee Worley, the new executive director of the National Training Fund, will go over some of our new training initiatives, initiatives that have resulted in collaboration with Impact. Next up will be political handicapper Charlie Cook and his thoughts on what lies ahead in the coming election season. Mr. Cook is adept at crunching the numbers, looking at trends, and reading the tea leaves where politics is concerned. Rounding out the morning session will be the signing of a historic agreement between Impact and the American Subcontractor Association Strategic Partnership. The ASA is one of the key employer groups in the construction industry, and the opportunity to share information and ideas 
with such a large employer can only help us in our goal to grow market share. Our thanks to Walter Bazan for joining us here in Las Vegas. The Monday morning general session always leads into the KPI luncheon, and this year is no exception. We will have a drawing for four new iPads for those who registered early for the conference. But a word to the wise, you must be present to win. The afternoon will feature a new and dynamic slate of breakout sessions. Here are but two examples. The New Deal breakout is the usual chance for contractors and customers to get together with Ironworker leadership, but this year, every president of every district council in the U.S. and Canada will also be on hand. And in the final round of today's breakouts, the steel supply chain session comes with the opportunity to earn continuing education credits. <laughs> Tuesday morning kicks off at 7.30 with a brief update from Joel Dandrea with the Specialized Carriers and Rigging Association, a large association that employs large numbers of our members. Next up is the Executive Director of Safety and Health, Steve Rank. Steve is not only going to review the 12 most hazardous activities in our dangerous industry, he's going to explain yet another Ironworker Impact First initiative. Our goal is to have zero fatalities on the job site, and Steve will go over some of the things we're going to be doing in this very important awareness campaign. What we're doing to make fabrication shops more competitive will be the topic of a presentation hosted by IMPACT's Director of Education and Training, Rick Sullivan. Joining Rick will be Tony Walensic, the Executive Director of the Shop Department. I'll give you one little sneak preview. You already know about our foreman training program. Well, we're in the process of developing lead man training for shops. Though I may be starting to sound like a broken record, here comes yet another first at this year's meeting. Vic Cornelier president of TSI Exterior Wall Systems and co-chair of our National Training Fund will be hosting a presentation with developers from around the country. It's our chance to hear firsthand what's coming down the pike where commercial real estate is concerned. Next up, our friend with the NMAPC, Steve Lindauer, will moderate a panel discussion that grows every year in the number of owners and the diversity of our customers who take part. And who better than Impact's own Kevin Hilton to get in the ring with iron workers and contractors? This session will have two parts, one where our business managers have the floor and a second where the contractors get to have their say. Inspiration is sure to be the order of the day when we hear from disabled veteran Josh Blyle, who will be visiting us at lunch. Tuesday afternoon features one session of four breakouts and wraps up around a quarter after three. That ambitious agenda concludes with the labor management portion of the conference. Wednesday's sessions here at the Paris Hotel are the usual ironworkers only meetings. For the first time though, we're offering two day-long courses for contractors at our Ironworkers training facility here in Las Vegas. Wednesday's topic is project management. The course will focus on how to evaluate project management performance and expectations. On Thursday, getting paid will be the subject. This session is designed to help you get paid in full and on time for the work you do. Both sessions will run from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and both sessions are absolutely free but you'll have to take a cab or supply your own transportation. There's more information about both of these very worthwhile sessions in the online agenda, which you can access once again by going to bit.ly backslash meeting 2012.